Uh, when developers write code, they often have to wonder what triggered an event, why some code ran, what happened when a button was clicked. I'll be nice. Then I won't our, our, next, our next presenter is, is Joel, who would like to show you some of his innovation living aside of brackets and edge code. Joel. Thank you very much. So this one's going to be for all the hardcore JavaScript developers out there. Did anybody come to Max? All right. All right. So Hello. I'm a uh, back-end web developer at heart. And in this scenario, what I'm doing here is uh, I've got, I'm working with a couple people, a front-end developer, a designer. We're working on this website. Um, and they've asked me to make a whole bunch of changes and implement some server stuff. So, so, so let's see what we got going on here. So here's, here's the code they've handed me. I'll fire that up in my web browser. And the first thing that, uh, and I'm in this live development mode here, the first thing uh, that I need to do, the developer asked me, or the designer asked me, he said, I hate that red color. Let's make that a little bit better color. So I go and look at the front end coder's uh, JavaScript or CSS, and look, he wrote like a thousand lines of CSS. I have no idea where in the CSS his code is, right? The code to change this. So anyway, um, Normally, I'd have to hunt through this, maybe fire up some debugging tools to figure that out. What I can do now with uh, brackets and edge code is I can just hold down command on my keyboard. I can click on this, and I immediately see everything that applies to this element ordered by how specific it is. So I look through this, I think, hey, this guy probably named things reasonably. Maybe this selected one is what I want. And bam, it takes me right to that line of code. I'll do that again. Watch the code. I just click on this. It shows me exactly the set of lines of code that I need to change. Then I can go in here. I can change this. I can choose a more subdued color. I can move on. You know, really quickly, I got through that change I needed from my, my, develop, my designer. All right, so the next thing I need to do is uh, we've mocked up this interface here where I choose an activity, I get some dates, so forth. But this is all canned. I need to make this database driven. So I've already started doing that coding. Um, let me go ahead and switch to that project. Code runs. Uh, and when I make this selection, it's supposed to go off to the database and figure out what days are available. Uh, but unfortunately, nothing came back, right? So there could be like 100 different places that this error exists, right? The error could be in, you know, maybe the AJAX request isn't getting made. Maybe the database isn't working. Now, Theseus has been running in the background and capturing all sorts of information. So I can switch over to my reservation code. This is the client side code. And immediately, I see everything that's ever ran so far. So every single function has how many calls next to it that have ever been made. Um, Things that have never been called are shown in gray here. And I can scroll right down here, and I can say, hey, look it, my AJAX response handler has already been called. And uh, it's a little bit hard to see. The interface is a little bit small, but I'll go ahead and zoom in here. And you can see I already get some data right here. Uh, it came back. The callback got called, but it got called with no data. So something's wrong on the server side. All right, so now I need to figure out what's going on on the server. Now, another cool thing about Theseus is it lets you debug these two things at the same time. So I can go over to my server code here, and I can add my uh, API function handler and my, uh, my, my thing that goes in the database and actually gets the dates. And you see down here, the log is actually putting all those things together. Uh, so the command get dates got called. It called this get dates function, then the response handler executed. It's all interleaved. And if I, uh, this is all live. If I go and make another broken still request, I see all those things show up. I can see these different things happening. And I can go over here. Uh, that's right. I can go over here and I can say, is the right stuff coming across the wire? So I can look at these arguments. I can drill down. I can say, hey, look, it did call it with climbing. So the right data is coming across. So I was already able to immediately figure out that's going right. But I look here and I see the activity for this get dates function is undefined. So something's going wrong between these two functions. So immediately I know exactly where to look without adding any log statements or anything like that. Um, and I go up here and I look Chloe at the call. And uh, look, I just made a typo, a really simple typo. Fix that. It would have taken me forever to find because it's in a, dy a dynamic property name, but I got it fixed. And uh, we'll go in here. We'll uh, relaunch our server. The, lives, the log's still live and everything here. Our mosh server's running again. And we'll give this a go, see if we fixed it. Pit. And look at that. And we see all of our data coming through on the log there. Oh my god! Right on. That's amazing. And I'm going to go two seconds over because this neat, if you're really brave, you can use it right now today. So you can go to GitHub, and you can check this out. If you go to GitHub uh, slash Adobe Research, oh, wow. you can go find Theseus and lots of other great stuff one, we're working on. And there's donuts. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Estrada. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. <laughs> Thank you, officer. Mr. Estrada. Can I get hey, hold off by you? You got to go. But have a donut. All right. Come on. 
Thank you. So, 